Good morning and welcome to Christian Life Fellowship. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at CLF. I want to thank you so much for joining. If it's your first time, thanks for joining us this morning. Now, I just have a few things to chat about with you before we start the service and then we're gonna get right into it. The first one is, is we have an incredible family day event for our church families on February 15th for family day. If you're a part of our church and wanna take part in a crazy drive around town solving a fun mystery, well then we have something for you. We're calling it Family Day Adventure. Families, we need your help to find the queen's missing cow, Betsy. She's gone missing and the only one who can find her is you. So parents, click on the link in the description below and sign up for this family fun day event. There's a prize at the end for everyone who takes part and registration closes February 10th. And don't worry, it's for both younger kids and for older kids. There's an option to choose between the two, so take a look there, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hello CLF, I've got great news for CLF youth. Last week, a province-wide health update was provided allowing churches to run youth program gatherings again. We're excited about this opportunity, but of course are going to be taking our COVID-19 safety plan seriously as we start gathering again for youth ministry this week. Couple things. Students, we'd love to see you at youth group this week. Junior Youth is happening on Tuesday nights from 6.30 until 8 o'clock p.m. And Senior Youth has been split into two alternating groups. If you are in grade 10 to 12, it's your turn to meet on Wednesday night this week from 7.30 to 9 o'clock p.m. And if you're in grade 8 to 9, it'll be your turn next week to also meet on Wednesday night, again, from 7.30 until 9 o'clock p.m. Don't forget to invite your friends and wear your masks. Parents, if you have youth in between grade six to grade 12 and you're not on my email list, please, please, please reach out to me and I will add your email right away so you're up to date each week on what's happening with CLF Youth. Last thing really quick, if any of you listening are interested in, in helping out or being a leader at CLF Youth, we need to build up our team and I'd love to chat with you. So please reach out to me right away if you're interested and I can promise you this, it is super fun and extremely rewarding. Thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey CLF Kids, I'm Angela, the CLF Kids Director. I sure do miss seeing you in person on Sunday mornings. So I was thinking, who likes cookies? I know I sure do. What's your favorite kind of cookie? I'll wait a minute while you tell me. Did you say chocolate chip or maybe peanut butter? How about oatmeal? Is there really a bad cookie? I like all those cookies. So if you email me here at angelalynnfibs at gmail.com, I'll send you the secure Zoom link for a baking party. Let's meet up and bake some of those delicious cookies and we can eat them together on this Sunday at 11 o'clock following the online church service. I hope you can join me. Looking forward to seeing you there. Bye guys. Well, every year there is uh, some good and there's some bad. Now, of course we know that 2020 didn't turn out exactly how we wanted, but of course Jesus was there. And in 2020, I know that God was there. And so in the description of the YouTube video below, you're gonna see a link to what we're calling the good list. It's gonna send you to a, to a, uh, a, a separate site and we want you to fill in there about all the good things God did in your life in 2020. Here's one example, uh, or a testimony. One mother wrote about her miracle baby boy being born in 2020. There's complications and ultimately led to her healing and the baby being born totally fine and happy. That's God's goodness in 2020. Now, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter and you want to be and hear what's going on here at church, head over to clfcr.com and you'll find at the bottom of the page, you can hit subscribe and fill in your email. It's just that easy. Or if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe so that you know the, when the next video is going to be coming out and it'll kind of, it'll tell you, make it a little easier for you. Well, thank you for joining us this morning at Christian Life Fellowship. Lord bless you.
Christian Life Fellowship is so awesome to have you join us this morning for worship. I encourage you to sing in your own house. Sing to your kids, sing with your kids, or sing by yourself, whatever it is. Best thing we can do is sing. If we're having a hard time feeling the Lord, the best thing you can do is sing. And just allow his presence to just infuse and be in and with you in your home. So we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. That you are here. That you are near. And that you're in our houses. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you into our houses. Amen. We welcome you into our houses. Just right now, even in your own home, just say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Jesus, we welcome you here. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let's continue to worship this morning. singing this song this morning. Actually, we're pre-recording this song, as you know. But I just feel like the Lord is just saying something to me in it, and I just want to share with you. I think a lot of us, we want to see earthly victories in life, right? 
I think we can all agree, sitting at home, we want to see earthly victories. We want to have Jesus show up with signs and wonders and miracles in our city and in our neighborhood with our friends and our family. But when it talks about that there is power in the mighty name of Jesus and every war he wages, he, he wins. We're not talking about today. We're actually not even talking about tomorrow. We're actually talking about eternity. Because I know how this story ends. Heaven. And the victory we're going to see is ultimately when we meet Jesus Christ. And the battle belongs to him. And the victory is his. And the victory that we stand in is the victory that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. I feel like it's easy for us to forget that and we look to earthly victories. But Jesus says, no, 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 I'm talking eternal. I'm talking spiritual. I'm not talking against people. I'm not talking ideology. I'm talking in the spirit realm. The things unseen. As Ephesians 6 says, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And our victory belongs in that court every time, because we have the power of Jesus Christ with us and in us. But it might not change what it looks like outside, but it will change what it is on the back side of it, on the, on the other side, the spiritual side. So I just want to encourage you with that this morning. See, the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. That's what he does today. You turn it for good. He doesn't let anything fall. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. What's he turning for good in your life? You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, you do, God. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. So I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. So I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle. Who you are 
I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. By praising your name. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. By praising your name. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Thank you, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Have you ever been on a trip and gotten lost? Most likely. You know, years ago, I was invited to preach at a small country church, and I'd been there once before, and I thought I remembered how to get there. You can see where this is going. And so our girls were small, and so we loaded everyone into the van, and on our way there, I got very lost. And we ended up about 45 minutes out of the way, and by the time I got us turned around and we got to the church, their service was over. And we got out of the van and realized we were too late. And one of our girls responded and said this. They said, uh, well, maybe next time you should let mom drive. It was, uh, it was humbling. Uh, <laughs> you know, it helps in life when you know which way to go. And today, as we continue this series on the I am statements of Jesus, we're going to look more closely at the time Jesus says, I am the way the truth, and the life. And we find that in John chapter 14. If you want to turn your Bible there, click there. We start at verse 1, and this is Jesus talking. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my Father's house. If this were not so, 
when I've told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So this chapter starts, right, with, with Jesus telling his followers to not let their hearts be troubled. And he's saying this because he had just told them in the chapter before, he had just told them that one of them would betray him, Judas, right? And that Peter would deny him, even knowing him. And that, that would have been very shocking to hear after, you know, three plus years of every day following Jesus, committing their whole life to following him, for him to deliver this information. And that, so the destination that they thought they were headed to was suddenly different. And so Jesus tells them, right, then he says, and you know the way to where I'm going. And of course, they respond, we have no idea where you're going. We thought we knew, but clearly we do not. We don't know. Not knowing which way to go can be very disheartening. <laughs> you know, thinking that you're headed in the right direction to find out you're not isn't easy information to process sometimes, especially when the destination is important. As the example of us going to that small country church illustrates, Jesus tells us the remedy for when our hearts are troubled. He tells us to trust God and to trust him. And by saying, trust in God and trust in me, what Jesus is telling his followers that day is that he is God and that in him we can find comfort and peace for a troubled heart. Many people, including believers, are experiencing a troubled heart in this current situation we find ourselves in. But as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, you and I have a solution available to us that's a, that's a remedy to a troubled heart. And accessing that solution starts by trusting God. Jesus explains then why we can trust him. He goes on to, to paint this picture of eternity, right? He says, there's more than enough room in my father's home. I'm going to get it ready and I'll come back for you. And then you will always be with me where I am. Right now, remember, he's saying this in response to having just told them that one of them would betray him and, and that Peter would deny even knowing him. And so this is why he's saying this. And, and what he's getting at is he's saying the reason that you and I, that they could, and the reason that you and I can trust God when life throws us a curveball, when life becomes difficult, when we find, when we find out that we aren't headed in the direction that we thought we were is because God actually knows what he's doing. He has a plan. He is preparing. He has a place for us, even when we feel displaced here in this world. God is not caught off guard by betrayal or denial or pandemics. He isn't panicking. So we can trust him in every circumstance. He cares. Yes, he cares deeply about the moment that you're in right now, but he also has the bigger picture of our life and mind because his ultimate goal is for each and every one of us to live with him in eternity, in the place that he is preparing for us. And what I've come to learn and what I see in the Bible is that sometimes Difficulty is necessary to get me ready for God's way of accomplishing his purposes, his mission in my life. Jesus says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus now, he doesn't say that he would show them the way. Jesus says, I am the way. He is the way. And he doesn't say to them, I'm going to teach you truth. Jesus says, he is the truth. And right, and he doesn't offer to show them some insights or, you know, secrets to life. Jesus says he is the life. And then he goes on and he makes this incredibly stunning statement. In verse six, he says, no one comes to the father except through me. Now, this is one of the most controversial things that Jesus says, in my opinion, 
And many people, right, they, they don't mind saying that Jesus is one legitimate way to God, but they also would say that other religions and maybe individuals have their own legitimate ways to God. But the Bible is exclusive. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. The Bible consistently presents one true God, and Jesus is consistently presented as the only way to the one true God. And perhaps you don't appreciate hearing that this morning or today. But stop to consider just this. How deeply could you trust Jesus if he had said this, if he'd said, well, I'm one possible way. I'm one possible truth. It'd be hard to trust that, right? And that kind of statement doesn't calm a troubled heart or soothe a troubled mind. But instead, we have the privilege of knowing there's one God, one way, one truth, and one life. So we can trust the full weight of our lives on him. We can trust him. Jesus continues, right, in verse 7. If He says, if you'd really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him. And you've seen him. Jesus was, is, and will always be the perfect representation of God. To know Jesus is to know God. And if you're listening to or watching this today, and you've never entered into that exclusive relationship with Jesus, where you trust him as the only way to eternity with the Heavenly Father, let me encourage you to make that choice right now. And, And then let us know. And we'll help you get started in that relationship. And you can let us know by going to our website, clfcr.com, clfcr.com, and clicking on the Connect tab, getting in touch with us. Now, for those of you who've already made that decision, i got a few things for you to think about and to consider. You know, what do you do when your heart's troubled? What way do you go about trying to bring peace to your heart and mind? Right? Maybe you dive into addictive or self-medicating behavior. Maybe you use something sinful. Maybe you eat more food than you should. Or you try and get lost in social media or by binge-watching a show that you like. And it, it might work briefly. But let me remind you that Jesus is the only way. True peace in, in the face of troubling circumstances is only found in God. Turn to Jesus to find it. Let me ask you this, where do you find truth when you're confused and uncertain? God has given us that the Bible is a gift. It is truth. It doesn't just contain truth. It is truth. Let me share with you, recently in my personal time with God, I read Psalm 19, and the last verse says this. It says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And it was exactly what I needed to hear that day. So I memorized it, and I've been repeating it to myself daily since then. You know, um, as a follower of Jesus, all other truth that you find in this world is subject to the truth of the Bible. Consider that. Weigh that. Use it. Lastly, I want to ask you this. Where do you find life-giving things? You know, that, that bring peace, that sustain you, that help you persevere in life. It's found in the person of Jesus. And as you pursue him regularly and personally, you will begin to experience the life that he offers. And when then what you'll find happens is the life of Jesus uh, is more than we can contain. It will begin to overflow from your life onto others. And they will experience Jesus through you. And, I mean, that gives you something to be happy about, to be joyful over, to celebrate, even in difficulty. So, Got a little bit of homework for you. A few questions for you to consider today. I mean, I already gave you some, but but this is to assist you afterwards in thinking through and applying today's message. So there's just three. Here they are. In what ways are your family, friends, and neighbors, co-workers troubled right now? Make a list. Then take a few minutes, pray about it specifically, and then ask God if there's something he wants you to do. Second question is this, how would you respond to someone who thinks there are many ways to God? And the third question is this, identify one way that you try to handle life that isn't God-centered. One truth that you're grappling to believe and, and one, 
one way that you would like to experience a more full life. Pray about it, ask God for help and direction, and then make a plan that moves you towards change. He is the way, the truth, and the life for us. I want to pray for you this morning that uh, we would know that, live it, and experience it. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you that we can know you, Jesus. Thank you that when we know you, we know the Father. That Thank you that, Jesus, you are the full representation of God to us. Lord, may we know you as the way, the truth, and the life in every area, in every aspect of our heart, our mind, in everything that we say, in everything we think, in everything we do. May we know you, Jesus, as the way, the truth, and the life. God, we give you permission to speak to us in, in the areas of our life where we are going our own way, where we're thinking our own thoughts and holding on to what we think is truth. When we're hanging on to things that we think are life-giving, but they're not. God, come speak to us. Holy Spirit, talk to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you know the way, that you always know the way, and that you've shown us the way. Thank you, God, that we can trust you, that you are in control of every situation and circumstance, that, that the situation we find ourselves in right now is not a surprise to you. And so we don't have to be troubled. God, help us to find our peace and comfort in you. To trust that, that even in the midst of this situation, God, you have good plans at work. Thank you for them. Lord, I pray that your blessing would be on each home, in each marriage, workplace, friendship, school. That you would, oh God, come and live and, and just inhabit us, oh God. Because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in your beautiful name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Well, thank you for joining us at CLF this morning. It is such a blessing to have you here in our morning service. But before you shut this off, if you missed our announcements at the start of the service, you're really not going to want to miss them. We have some great things coming up, including a cookie baking thing right after the service this morning. And if you don't listen to the announcements, you're not going to hear about all the information for it. So take a listen to the announcements uh, and Lord bless you throughout the week. Here they are. Good morning and welcome to Christian Life Fellowship. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at CLF. I want to thank you so much for joining. If it's your first time, thanks for joining us this morning. Now, I just have a few things to chat about with you before we start the service and then we're going to get right into it. The first one is, is we have an incredible family day event for our church families on February 15th for family day. If you're a part of our church and want to take part in a crazy drive around town solving a fun mystery, well then we have something for you. We're calling it Family Day Adventure. Families, we need your help to find the queen's missing cow, Betsy. She's gone missing and the only one who can find her is you. So parents, click on the link in the description below and sign up for this family fun day event. There's a prize at the end for everyone who takes part and registration closes February 10th. And don't worry, it's for both younger kids and for older kids. There's an option to choose between the two, so take a look there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hello, CLF. I've got great news for CLF youth. Last week, a province-wide health update was provided allowing churches to run youth program gatherings again. We're excited about this opportunity, but of course are going to be taking our COVID-19 safety plan seriously as we start gathering again for youth ministry this week. Couple things. Students, we'd love to see you at youth group this week. Junior Youth is happening on Tuesday nights from 6.30 until 8 o'clock p.m. And Senior Youth has been split into two alternating groups. If you are in grade 10 to 12, it's your turn to meet on Wednesday night this week from 7.30 to 9 o'clock p.m. And if you're in grade 8 to 9, it'll be your turn next week to also meet on Wednesday night again from 7.30 until 9 o'clock p.m. Don't forget to invite your friends and wear your masks. Parents, if you have youth in between grade six to grade 12 and you're not on my email list, please, please, please reach out to me and I will add your email right away so you're up to date each week on what's happening with CLF Youth. Last thing really quick, 
If any of you listening are interested in, in helping out or being a leader at CLF Youth, we need to build up our team. And I'd love to chat with you. So please reach out to me right away if you're interested. And I can promise you this, it is super fun and extremely rewarding. Thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey CLF Kids, I'm Angela, the CLF Kids Director. I sure do miss seeing you in person on Sunday mornings. So I was thinking, who likes cookies? I know I sure do. What's your favorite kind of cookie? I'll wait a minute while you tell me. Did you say chocolate chip? Or maybe peanut butter? How about oatmeal? Is there really a bad cookie? I like all those cookies. So if you email me here at angelalinfibs at gmail.com, I'll send you the secure Zoom link for a baking party. Let's meet up and bake some of those delicious cookies and we can eat them together on this Sunday at 11 o'clock following the online church service. I hope you can join me. Looking forward to seeing you there. Bye guys. Well, every year there is uh, some good and there's some bad. Now, of course we know that 2020 didn't turn out exactly how we wanted, but of course Jesus was there. And in 2020, I know that God was there. And so in the description of the YouTube video below, you're gonna see a link to what we're calling the good list. It's gonna send you to a, to a, a, a separate site and we want you to fill in there about all the good things God did in your life in 2020. Here's one example uh, or a testimony. One mother wrote about her miracle baby boy being born in 2020. There's complications and ultimately led to her healing and the baby being born totally fine and happy. That's God's goodness in 2020. Now, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter and you wanna be and hear what's going on here at church, head over to clfcr.com and you'll find at the bottom of the page, you can hit subscribe and fill in your email. It's just that easy. Or if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe so that you know the, when the next video is gonna be coming out and it'll kinda, it'll tell you, make it a little easier for you. Well, thank you for joining us this morning at Christian Life Fellowship. Lord bless you.